And good afternoon. It's time for the weekly Q&A, but we're doing a flip-flop this week. Instead of publishing on Saturday at 5 p.m., I decided to do it today, Friday, because it just worked better for the schedule. So the goal, everyone, is to answer as many questions as possible from all of you all over social media. However, this video today is just questions. Uh, I'm pulling questions just from last week's Q&A uh, on YouTube, okay? So I, that, that was the question of the day for the video seven days ago. So there's plenty to work with just on YouTube. We will pick up Instagram, Twitter, Facebook next week. Sound good? And yes, drinking an espresso, getting a little jolt of caffeine to, uh, to, to kick off the weekend, if you will, to kick off the weekend. Here we go. All right, let's dive in. Okay, Malgan Andrew asks, what are your favorite shoes in each di discipline from 2019? Trail race shoe, road race shoe, training trail shoe, and training road shoe. So, uh, Malgan, you are in luck because you probably saw over the past couple days, I will link to them right now, upper right hand corner, click on those cards that come out. I give you my top three road training shoes, uh, trail training shoes, and wait for it, tomorrow I'm going to be publishing, is it tomorrow or the next day, I'll be publishing my favorite racing shoes from 2019. So I'm going to save it. It's a good question, but just stay tuned. And yes, those cards will take you to the answers. Here we go. Uh, let's see. One second. Let's see. Da, 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 da. What is the best pair of running shoes for speed workouts and races 10K and under for under $100? Ingmar Hikens asked that. So Ingmar, uh, I would say check out the Saucony Fast Twitch lineup or the New Balance uh, Zante Pursuits uh, also. So, but I would, I love, is it out here? Yes, it is. Here we go. The Saucony Fast Twitch. This is the nine. This is, so this is last year's iteration, but um, I think this is a great, a four, I think, I think like 68 bucks or, I don't, it's very affordable. Uh, so this is the Saucony Fast Twitch. Check it out. I think it's a great option for you. All right, good question. Moving on. Uh, Danish Knees asks, what's that orange shoe on the shelf, the one behind Seth's left shoulder? Seth's left, left shoulder. Oh, this guy? Is it this one you're talking about? The on, this is the on cloud flow, although those shoes change quite a bit back there, so I don't know if this is the one. Anyway, Danish Knees, this is the on cloud flow. Good question. I'm not sure if that's the shoe you were referencing. Okay, moving on here, and thank you for sending in all the questions in the comments down below. Um, let's see, okay, I'm just trying to find the, it always helps to put a question mark, here we go. Um, William Knight asks, this is perfect, uh, when is the video publishing with the hip uh, exercises? So that is from William Knight. William, you're in luck. I think I got it done for you this week. I don't know if you were the one that was asking about it. You must, you must be. So um, it's upper right hand corner. I published it maybe four or five days ago. Upper right hand corner. I work through hip mobility exercises that I do. In fact, I need to go do them uh, tonight here in the house. And it, hopefully it helps. I'm trying to work on my range of motion going into the Houston Marathon. For everyone out there that's interested in flexibility um, and, and really range of motion through my stride. So, William, good question. Upper right hand corner, you will enjoy it, okay? MCM asks Seth, what is your resting heart rate? Do you feel a decrease in resting heart rate over time can be an indicator of overall fitness gain? That's from MCM. I don't know. As, you, as many of you know, I don't train by heart rate and I, my dad, when he went to the doctor like years ago when he was running a lot, the doctor was like really concerned because his heart rate was so low. Um, and so for me, like I just, I just, I honestly, if I had to throw a number out there, my guess would be around 55, 50, 55. I honestly don't know. So MCM, I apologize, but I just don't train by heart rate. Um, and, but I would say like a lower heart rate uh, is an overall indicator of good, of good fitness. I would agree with that notion, MCM. Good question. Okay, moving on. Let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. And so this is interesting. Uh, Jesus Conde asks, any thought about the new FBR concept? Okay, has anybody heard of the FBR concept? I have not. I had to Google it. FBR concept and Jesus, it's crazy. So basically, if you don't know what that is, uh, Google it. It's these new running shoes. And listen, I didn't do any research, but from what I can tell, it's these new running shoes 
that don't have a heel. So the heel, so like this, this section of the shoe is like gone. This midsole, so basically what they're trying to teach people is to run on their toes or run like at, at the very least on their midfoot because if they try to land in heel strike, um, if they if they try to heel strike, they will, there's nothing there. Like it's gonna hurt probably. So um, I don't know, Jesus. I mean, I'm more of a midfoot to uh, forefoot striker in my gate side, in my foot strike. And I think it's probably not gonna catch on because I bet it would lead to injuries over time. And I also would say that when you get tired late in a race, um, I do kind of start to lean back a little bit and land on my heel a little bit more. So I don't think it's going to catch on, but it's a, listen, innovation. It's all about innovation in the running shoe world. And I think that's a new way. I, I, like, I like the fact that they're trying something new. I'll leave it at that. Thank you for the question. Hey, Zeus, moving on here. Um, Chris asks, Saucony Ride ISO2, what's your thoughts? Middle distance shoe. Uh, Chris, I don't know what your middle distance is signify, like what you qualify as a middle distance um, as, as far as training. And, uh, but uh, yeah, I think, and listen, I don't own the Saucony Ride, but uh, I think it's, um, yeah, I think you could pull off middle distance. I wouldn't use it for long runs, but I think it would be a good middle distance shoe. So Chris, hope that helps. Uh, but I don't, I don't have experience. I've only tried the Saucony Ride in a shoe store. I don't actually, I haven't actually bought it. So good question. Oh man, here we go. From Mind, he says, Hey Seth, I was wondering how much and how often you increase the mileage on your long runs. As a new and young runner, I've been increasing my long runs by one mile a week, and I'm wondering if that's too much, even though I'm feeling perfectly fine from doing so as of right now. Mind, I think that's brilliant. I think one mile a week, as long as you're not going too high, but I think I think that's a very smart uh, addition to the law. Like if you're it's starting at 10 miles, and then your next long run, and then by a month later, you're at 14. I think that's okay. I think it's okay. I think it's good. I really do. I don't think it's too aggressive. I don't think it's um, playing it too safe. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, now listen, I don't know your overall um, experience level. I don't know your injury history. I don't know the surface that you're running on. So take that with a grain of salt, but um, that doesn't sound too aggressive to me. So mine. Hope that helps. I think you're moving in the right direction. Okay, here we go. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, this is a, a, a comment from Spencer. He's talking about the stride. We'll come back to that another time. Uh, let's see, I'm looking for question marks, question marks. Okay, Nick asks, and I'm not, you know, I'm just reading as we go here. What type of music do you like to listen to? What type is the most motivational to you? Nick, I like these life questions as well. Like, I love running, but I also love life as well. So I like this, Nick. Um, Nick. So for me, like my band in the late 90s and early 2000s was the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Like that is all me and my buddies listened to in high school. Like it was, we just rock, we just love the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Uh, but I must say I'm a little bit of an old soul. So classic rock, I'll even go back to like the uh, original pop music of like the 50s. Um, you know, my mom is a big uh, deadhead for all the deadheads out there. So I was kind of raised in that genre of music of like classic rock and uh, but I don't listen to music when I run I listen to audiobooks or podcasts uh, so anyway Nick I love the question um, and, but even like I mean I, I enjoy like a Mumford and Sons a kind of you know a newer a newer band yeah hope that helps Nick good question I love it okay moving on here so Mo here we go Mo Palmer asks do you take any safety precautions for animals etc for trail running so Mo I don't wear uh, one of my headphones, if you listen to if you listen to headphones while, while you run, take one out, that's for sure, so you can listen for things around you. Mo, when I feel uncomfortable in a certain location, it just, it either feels like there could be a moose around, or a bear, or a mountain lion. Like, it, there's areas where I just can sense, like, this would be a great place for a moose to live, and if there's a baby moose, you don't want to mess with mama moose, um, whatever the case may be. So, I was always taught to be loud and to make sure the animal knows that you're coming. If you're running down a trail, just I just clap my hands. I just just clap my hands and just make sure that they know because you don't I, I, I heard I've been told that you don't want to startle the animal. So if they hear you coming, there's a good chance they they might run off. Um, so Mo, 
those are my two. I don't carry a, like a, a bear spray. Um, but anyway, though, that's my thought on animals. They, it is, it is a legitimate question though, here in Colorado, like a guy was attacked by a mountain lion last year here while running. So it's serious. Um, Jason asked, do you have any future plans to run UTMB? Yes. I'm guess I'm 34. Jason, I'm going to say maybe when I'm 37 or 39. Just putting it out there. I'm gonna. I'm taking my time. I'm enjoying the speed while I still have it in my legs, and I've got a lot of thoughts on the build up to UTMB someday. Oh, someday. Here we go. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Joy Rida says, Seth, I found your comment on not negative splitting really interesting. Almost all of the running community pushes the negative split philosophy, but I imagine your viewpoint is very valid slash correct, especially. If you're pushing for the full potential in a race, yes. Okay, that wasn't a question, sorry. But thank you for listening, I appreciate it. Okay, moving on here. Um, let's see. Seth, currently a high school runner at around 32 miles a week. I know it's very low, but I've had some complications along the way. How do you recommend I grow my weekly mileage? First of all, and that's from Nezong A. I don't think that's very low at all. Um, my brother, I was coaching him his senior year and he uh i think we had i think we had him right about 40 miles a week approximately if joseph watches this he'll be able to correct i think it was around 40 and he he placed 10th at footlocker okay he was 10th in the nation at footlocker so the high mileage for the 5k distance yeah i think and i know some programs out there run 50 60 70 miles a week for high school i I don't always think it's necessary to have high volume, especially for such a short race. Like I know the 5K seems long, but it's it's really not everybody. It's it's a it's a sprint uh, compared to so many other races you will do later in life. So Nizung, I would say patience. Um, if you feel like you need a little more push, if you need a little more, if you're if you need a little more help with a bigger aerobic base in order to reach your goals. I would say, yeah, increase your mileage, and I would do it. Um, I would do it in phases, meaning uh, the first three months that you say, okay, I'm going to start to increase. I would go up, and actually, connecting back to what Jared said, I would go up to maybe 38 miles a week, and then hold that for two to three weeks, and then drop back down to 30, and then go back up to 40, and then hold that for three more weeks, and then back down, just so your body is getting used to that higher volume so or maybe it's 45 or whatever you know working with hopefully you have a, a coach that knows what he or she is doing and uh, they can help guide you along the way so i hope that helps nizung a all right moving on uh stefan lecout asks have you ever considered writing a book about the history of running uh combining your love for the sport plus history would surely make a great book i know it would require a huge amount of time but maybe later when you get older yes stefan I definitely think that I, I actually used to, I used to uh, journal quite a bit. I enjoy writing. I just don't have time for it right now, but I think I have some ideas for running books. So yes, Stefan, I would say yes to that question. I appreciate it. Okay, moving on here. Uh, let's see. Carlo Ortega asks, I've only been running seriously for around four months. How should a beginner approach creating their training plan? Planning to do a 10K trail uh, race on February 22nd. So Carlo, I would say, first of all, enjoy the process. You know, um, yeah, I think training plans are great, but don't feel like at the end of the day, this sport, I think it should be fun. It should be enjoyable. And I think sometimes training plans are, they're good, but at the same time, I don't want you to feel like, oh, I missed a workout now, like everything is thrown off, or I didn't run my long run I had to stop it. I had to stop at 10 miles instead of getting to 12 miles for my long run that week. So, I just want to encourage everyone, like, um, have a little flexibility built into, especially when you're new, so you don't get a sour taste in your mouth when the training plan that you're using, whether it's from the internet or from a coach, um, it just doesn't turn you away from the sport because the sport is the best sport in the world. And uh, so anyway, that's my little my little rant for the day. But um, Carlo, if you're new to running, just take it easy, um, meaning build that aerobic base, um, slowly build up your mileage from maybe 
15 miles a week, maybe 20 miles a week, okay? Just easy and hold that and not fast. Go, you know, listen to your body, listen to your breathing, listen to your legs. And over time, you've been going for four months, over time, it'll get easier and it'll get easier. And when it starts to get easier, so this is a good point, um, an important point is that when it, when it gets easy, when 20 miles, when you're like, huh, I don't really feel tired. That's a great sign that you could start to increase your mileage a little bit more. Frankly, Carlo, I would not worry about workouts right now, like track workouts or speed workouts. Um, just continue to lay that base and stay healthy. That's how I would approach it. And then down the road, you can start to add in some more speed work. Good question. Good luck on your 10K trail race on February 22nd. That's exciting for you. Okay, moving on here. Da, 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 da. Okay, we've got some first comments. Okay, um, let's see. EL asks, why do you not wear the Pegasus Turbos anymore? So where are they? The Pegasus Turbos, they were out here. I thought they were out here. Um, so anyway, I do not actually, here they are. Yes, uh, so EL, the reason I don't wear the Turbos is because this collar, so this is the back of the shoe. I think that Nike, uh, even so, oh, this is a great, this is another important point. As shoes develop in their iterations, so when I say iteration, that means this is the 2019 iteration of the Nike Turbo. So I have the Tur Nike Turbo from 2018, so that's last year's iteration. I think that um, this shoe lost a little bit of weight from 2018, like it, yeah, dropped in weight because they changed the upper, okay? And, but I think companies, running shoe companies that sacrifice, um, sacrifice the comfort of the shoe in order to reduce the weight, uh, I think that is not moving in the right direction. So EL, the reason I don't use this shoe is because they really changed the collar of this turbo from 2018 to 2019. So much so that this collar caused my Achilles tendons to bleed and to have blisters. And I was like, enough of that. I, I, I said, I have plenty of other shoes to run in. So I have not run in this shoe in a long, long time because this collar is just rigid. It's just rigid. Now it's lighter, the shoe's lighter, but if it's causing my foot to bleed, I'm not gonna wear it. And so EL, you probably noticed uh, maybe 10 days ago, I bought a second pair of the Nike Turbo One. So that whole roundabout story to say is that I think shoes that, um, like the Beacon 2, I actually prefer the Beacon from the Beacon 1 from 2018 because of the upper, uh, yeah, anyway, that's a whole nother story, the Beacon story, but I'm just concerned when companies are so um, focused on reducing the weight of shoes that they discredit comfort and overall functionality. And I know a lot of people have had great success with the Turbo 2, but anyway, now I'm going on too long, but that's my answer, EL. I hope that helps, and that is why uh, I do not wear it anymore. Moving on here. Um, oh man, this is from Ennis, but it's kind of long. Oh boy, I'm trying to find the actual question. Um, okay, we're gonna take three more questions. This one is from Matt Potter. He says, Seth, I've noticed that you seem to self-coach. You are correct. Do you think that you could take a step to the next level by having uh, a different coach? Uh, not that I think it's necessary, just that I imagine most athletes who get Olympic qualifying standards do. I'm guessing this is more of a financial hurdle as it's a cost that if it doesn't add much, um, is it needed and da, 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 da. So uh, Matt, the reason I do not have a coach, one of the reasons is because I enjoy the process of being, what I've said before in the past is being the mad scientist as because I can test different types of training with my own body. It's kind of fun. So whether it's high volume, high altitude, um, high interval, whatever the case may be, or maybe low volume and see how that turns out. So I really enjoy tinkering with my training, Matt. So that's one reason. The other reason, Matt, is that I think coaching is good, but I think the most successful athletes have a training group. And I just, um, I enjoy, I, I would love to train in a group, but there's no, like the time commitment to go find a crew to train with every day or at least five days a week. I just don't have that kind of time. So that's another main reason, like coaches are amazing, 
but I think a training group is even more amazing to reach the next level. So good question, Matt. Okay, this is from Christian Scalia. Uh, would you race in Italy one day? Absolutely. I would love to go race in the Dolomites. It's on my bucket list. Good question, Christian. Okay, I think one more and then we're going to call it for the day. Uh, let's see. These are all from YouTube. And again, thank you for sending them in. Um, Jake Runs the World says, you said there will be a group of guys in Houston you will be running with. Is Butter going to be there? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I'll take one more question. I don't know. If he is there, you better believe I will chase the Butter. Okay, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to find one more for all of you to bring you as much value as possible today and today and today. I'm trying to find it. Okay. Uh, okay. Here we go. Here's one. This is from Kurt. He asks, uh, as you know, I've had a bunch of issues this year. I think health related. One, that, one thing that is being recommended to me by the folks I am running with is uh, to work on my... He has a high vertical oscillation in his cadence. So meaning he kind of bumps off the ground too much. He's kind of a bouncy stride, running stride. I am naturally a very bouncy runner. My cadence hovers around 160. And the thought is this has negatively affected me and has been a cause to some of the injuries over the last year. Therefore, the question is, do you have any specific ideas on how to increase cadence in workouts? So Kurt, I think it's a great observation that you don't want to be too bouncy. So I think you just, you have to make the mental choice to go forward and you have to tinker. Like you, your, you might have really strong ankles and strong calves that are causing you to bounce too much. And so you just have to make the mental choice to almost glide and slide your foot forward rather than bounce up like a basketball player, like just kind of uh, through your gait cycle, like push your foot forward to the next step and uh and that will help with your cadence as well so as quick as instead of like pushing it up and, and you might have great knee drive but sometimes too good knee drive is not good where your knees coming too high also causing you to bounce lastly kurt um i do quick feet exercises where i just stand in place and then you just move your feet as quick as possible and you do that and that really helps with my cadence i love that exercise um, I did it in college. I've been doing it ever since. And you just move your feet in place, keeping your eyes up, shoulders, you know, in the right position. Arm, you can even pump your arms a little bit and then just boom, just quick feet, quick feet. And that has helped with my cadence so, so much. Kurt, I hope that helps. And last but not least, all right, 2020 is on the horizon. What questions do you have about racing or training or shoes for the new year? Like shoes that are gonna be released in 2020 or maybe uh, races that you are uncertain about in 2020 that you're interested in, or uh, maybe you're interested in trying a new training plan, but you're just uncertain about it, ask down below. I'll be happy to pull as many questions as possible from that list and then put it into next week's Q&A. Sound good? I hope that brought you a little bit of value today here in the studio and signing off. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. All right, we're gonna toss it back on the right and the left to both Q and A's from the past two weeks. Uh, in case you, in fact, the one uh, last week where I pulled questions from for this one. So uh, if you haven't seen that, I think you will get a little value from that as well. All right, you guys are the best. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow. <laughs>